Every single player wants to become faster no matter what position we are talking about. Because let's face it, speed can be deadly. The faster and the more powerful your actions are, the more chances you have to win the ball, get past defenders, cope with fast attackers, and generally do things that slow players aren't capable of. Of course, I am not telling you that speed is the end-all be-all trait that will make you a successful player, but it definitely is a part of your performance you simply cannot neglect. Actually, that was exactly what I was talking about when I first started working with one of our athletes this summer, Ivan. Now Ivan is just like you, an aspiring pro that is is committed to his plan and willing to do anything it takes to achieve his vision. This past offseason, we worked together to address various weaknesses of his physical conditioning that were obvious after the assessments we ran him through. One of those weak spots was his linear and multidirectional speed. By just applying some basic principles of speed development, which we will talk about soon, and supplementing that with a gym program tailored to his needs, we managed to increase his top speed from 26.6 to 28.4 km per hour in only a matter of weeks. Needless to say that our our guy is still crushing it and progressing in season. Now I'm obviously not here to brag about that 6% of improvement, I'm just doing this video to help you realize that speed development, especially at a sub elite level, shouldn't be that confusing and that marginal gains, even smaller than that 6% improvement, are something that can propel you to the next levels of your career. You see, there are many quote unquote performance specialists out there who propose a variety of methodologies that are reminding me of black magic. However, as Harrington Emerson once quoted, there might be a billion in some methods, but principles are few. The man who grasps principles can successfully select his own methods. The man who tries methods, ignoring principles, is sure to have trouble. So yeah, there is no magic training method or exercise that can make every player faster by itself. Having said all of that, there are certain training principles that are proven to be successful through years and years of scientific research that we simply cannot neglect. Let's now go over three of those principles and tools that have helped me and my athletes see some really good gains in terms of speed performance for football. The first one I would like to go over is the efficiency of your biomechanics or put in simple words, the quality of your movement while you're sprinting in a straight line, cutting, turning, accelerating or decelerating. Energy efficient movement is a prerequisite when it comes to optimizing any parameter of your physical performance. So yeah, better speed mechanics can help you run faster, preserve more energy and reduce the risk for injury. But does perfect movement really exist? If we are talking about a 100 meter sprinter, I would say to some extent yes. But if we're talking about footballers, then no, perfect movement mechanics don't exist. A football game is full of chaos and unpredictable in nature, so we can't create robots. What we can do, however, is ingrain some more energy efficient movement mechanics so that you can make better use of all the forces your body is able to exert and absorb no matter what direction you're moving. This can be done in a series of ways using corrective and rhythmic exercises such as hops and skips or even sprint specific isometrics and locomotive plyometrics. All of the tools mentioned can be used to ingrain better movement. The tricky part here, however, is being aware of what's right and wrong when it comes to how to perform those exercises, as well as making proper exercise selection and dosing based on what your movement deficits are. And that's when a performance coach could be of great use. Now, the next thing I would like to highlight as a common mistake is players and coaches completely ditching sprints as an effective training tool. I mean, how the hell are you supposed to increase your speed if you're not actually putting your neuromuscular system under that exact stress? Now, there's a lot of ways you can start implementing sprints into your regimen like resisted sprints, hill sprints, sled pushes, multi-directional sprints or even just linear sprints from various starts. What you're gonna use is heavily dependent on the context of your situation. However, the main point I want you to keep from this is that you need to be hitting those max efforts and top velocities frequently during a week of training if you want to see your speed rise over time. Having said that, every time you perform speed training, I want each effort to be maximal and with fluid movement. Take adequate rest in between efforts and perform each action with high intent. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is related how you work out. You see, most coaches grew up and got educated by people who used to believe that a general strength-focused workout regimen or hypertrophy work sustained over a long period of time would drive great results in terms of strength, speed, and power. The truth, however, is far, far away from that. In the modern game, where speed and power are two heavily dominant characteristics, it makes sense to say that general strength and hypertrophy work 
can only get you so far. All it really takes is just opening your eyes up to a greater quote unquote toolbox and understanding your individual needs. A great point to start expanding that toolbox is plyometrics and ballistics. The transfer these two can have to athletic performance is unreal and evident in the vast majority of research articles that have studied their impact on various KPIs of football performance. Putting your neuromuscular system through maximal efforts with a fast stretch shortening cycle and a rapid motor unit recruitment can only be beneficial to performance if, of course, you use them properly. And that is where strength and conditioning principles come into play to guide the training process and drive the best possible adaptations. So if you would like a more in-depth video on any of those three points we mentioned, just let me know in the comments and we are going to dive deeper. I really hope you enjoyed this video, but before you leave, do me a favor and watch this video next.